Well, hello everybody and welcome to Lunch Break Live. Real talk about obesity, food obsession, recovery, and what's really eating you. I am Carrie De La Cruz and on today's show, stop stress eating. Let's talk about it. And before you guys get all stressed out, if you're a newer viewer and you want to know a little bit about me, don't worry, I'll tell you. I am a 2007 gastric bypass post-op, living life in recovery from obesity and compulsive obsessive food addiction as twice the woman in half the body. I'm also a recovery strategist and that's what we do every day around here. Instead of focusing on what you're supposed to eat, I focus on what's eating you. So that's what a recovery strategist does. It helps you come up with a strategy for owning your crap. All right. So that's me. And as usual, I want to find out more about you guys. First of all, thank you all of you who joined me yesterday for LBL's very first ever birthday. Super fun and exciting. Um, wow. It was a really, really great day. It worked up quite a sweat. And now today it's right back to the grindstone. So let's see who was brave enough to join me today. All right, let's see. All righty there. Georgette, you're the first one in the door, baby. Welcome. And Nancy and Jerry. Hey, Jerry, I've missed you all week. I know. I know you're on vacation with Jeb, and I've been seeing wonderful, wonderful pictures. Thank you so much for being here. Mom, it finally let you in. Thank you so much, and thank you for sharing the video. All righty. So as people begin to kind of fill in a little bit, well, not in that we're sense. I mean, I don't want you to fill in your jeans or anything, but you know, just kind of fill into the room here. Uh, come in to uh, talk about something fun like, you know, stress eating. Um, I want to ask you guys some questions, all right? That's what I like to do. I'm going to start there. Uh, do I, well, first of all, do I have any newer viewers? I should ask that. Anybody here who's a newer viewer, uh, whether you're live or on demand. So if you're live, I'll see you right now. If you're on demand, don't hesitate to let me know. Yeah, I am a newer viewer um, so that I can welcome you in and uh, let you know that this is the place to be if you want to feel better and live in recovery. So, um, all right. So newer viewers, welcome, welcome. Uh, anybody here dealing with stress in your life? Does anyone here have stress? And remember, this is an interactive program, so please use those icons, you know, flash me the, you know, flash a mad face or a wow face or, you know, whatever you want to do. But let me know that you are dealing with stress in your life. So far, Facebook wants me to think that there are no stressed people here. So this is going to be very interesting because of the delay in the feedback. Hola, Gabi, my cuñado. ¿Cómo está? All right, so... Georgette says, yes, yes, yes. You probably said it right away. You are someone who is stressed. All right. Well, welcome. You're in the right place because my name is Carrie and I am indeed stressed. All righty. Uh, here's what I want to know. Anybody here, happy stress, wedding stress is over. Yeah, now the marriage stress begins, right? For the you know newlyweds, right, Jerry? All right. Do I have any stress eaters here? Anybody who has figured out that when you're stressed, you eat, okay, um, or uh, participate in other unhealthy behaviors like drinking, like, okay, when you get stressed, you got to have a glass of wine, or you smoke, you got to go outside and have a cigarette, or, okay, um, you got to go shopping for retail therapy. Anybody here deal with stress by eating or participating in any other unhealthy, destructive behaviors? Mom, okay, mom says, yes, she does, and again, if you guys are giving me feedback, uh, Facebook is being very stingy today, so I can't really see it. All right, I see a thumbs up flying by there. Some thumbs up. Thank you guys so much. All right. Um, all right, so this is now now's where I need your feedback. I hope I can get it. I hope it will show up for me. What is your number one? I just want one number one source of stress in your life. Just make it like the category. You don't have to be super duper specific, but just give me the, the category that describes the number one stress in your life. All right, go. All right. Welcome, Carrie. Hey, I just asked everyone, first of all, if they, you know, had stress in their lives. And then I asked if they were stress eaters or stress doers. In other words, participate in unhealthy behaviors as a result of that stress. And 
Thirdly, right now, what is the number one source of stress in your life? Just general, broad, general terms. So Jerry says, uh, yes, but not all the time. Stress eating worked through that. Oh, you used to stress eat, but you've worked through that. Okay, so Georgette says, taking care of a loved one. Okay, a great deal of stress with a loved one. Carrie, welcome all the way from uh, the UK over there. Welcome, I'm so glad you're joining me. Just asked everyone, let's see, being overweight, number one stress, Jerry says. Steve, welcome in. I'm asking what the number one stress is. Being overwhelmed by stuff. So would you say responsibilities or, or things that you have to take care of in life, mom. And Suzette, welcome in. You're a newer viewer, aren't you? Welcome. Judy, is everything okay? You mentioned something about Brittany being in the hospital, so I hope everything's okay, or being rushed to emergency. I hope everything's okay. Stress eater, bad, Carrie says. All right, so the number one source of stress in your life, I've had some say taking care of a loved one. Some uh, Someone said um, being overweight, very stressful. Um, is someone else saying just everything in life that I have to take care of. Okay, hating myself and finances. So you're stressed because of your finances or what? Um, let's see here. Okay, and Larry, hey, welcome in. I'm really glad you're here. I just asked everyone, as uh, everyone's getting caught up, if you are stressed out, and I think pretty much everyone's going to say, yeah, I'm dealing with stress. If you're a stress eater or if you respond in other unhealthy ways and what your number one, your chief source of stress is. Okay, so just very um, basic. All right. So the most common, I think you guys will agree, the most common responses that people have for which the stress can be overwhelming. Hi, Leah. Is it Leah or Lee? I never really know. And Jimbo, I'm really glad you're here. Number one source of stress, that's what we're talking about, money. Money, tend, if we were playing Family Feud, that would probably be the number one answer, all right? Uh, job, which is often connected to money, but not always. Family, now again, these are now in no particular order. Family, loved ones, okay? And health. So it sounds to me like you guys hit pretty much all of that stuff, okay? And of course, there are more sources of stress, but those tend to be the general categories. Do you guys agree that pretty much if you're talking about sources of stress, those fit the bill? Go ahead and shoot me some thumbs up or something. Again, it seems like we have a little bit of lag with Facebook, so I may not be able to feed off of you guys, as it were, and get your responses. Oh, good. I see some thumbs up. Okay, terrific. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about money stress. Let's talk about the sorts of things that if we were going to be very specific about what those money problems say to us or how we are feeling about it, uh, I don't earn enough. Okay, there, there just isn't enough of it. I have too many bills. I can't afford to buy the things I need. I want more of it. I'm afraid of losing it and being without it. Would you guys agree that that sort of, that's the kind of, stress. That's what it says to you. Those are the feelings you're wrestling with when you're talking about money stresses. Right. Okay. Job. If you're dealing with job stress, maybe you're saying, I don't like the boss. I don't like my boss. Uh, I don't like what I do. You know, I don't like the job that I have. I don't think I'm paid fairly. I think I deserve to be paid more. It is too far from home. I don't like the commute. It's very stressful. Um, I don't like the hours. The hours, you know, maybe you got the swing shift or the midnight, right, overnight. Maybe you're working, your hours in, um, don't make it conducive to your home life or being with your loved one, being with your kids, whatever. So the hours, you don't feel valued or appreciated, right? That's a source of stress on the job. Maybe you don't get along with others. Maybe you don't like the people you work with. You don't get along with them. Maybe you're afraid, especially in this economy, of losing your job. Do those things... Okay, and so Jerry is saying facing retirement is a big money stress. Absolutely. Where you are in your career. So if you're aging and maybe you're stressed about losing your job and you're aging and you're like, hell would I ever get another job? I'm 62. I'm getting close to retirement. What if I lose my job? So there's a stress too, right? Yes, in general. And of course, we all have um, you know, specific things that we can fill in. But definitely, as I'm speaking to this stuff, I think you would agree that a lot of us share that. So this is common. This stress is not unique. It is common, okay? How about family? Someone said taking care of a loved one, okay? Um, we're talking about marriage, too, okay? Kids and parents. So that pretty well covers it, right? Family, 
Maybe I've got people out there who are worried about divorce. They're unhappy in their marriage. They're worried about their divorce. Maybe they're worried about their kids doing well in school, staying away from drugs, you know, not getting hurt, being good people. Um, maybe they're talking back to you and being disrespectful. Um, maybe you're afraid of death for them, right? Maybe you're talking about a parent that's uh, ill and you're worried that they're going to die, you know, and you don't, you can't do anything about it. Maybe you're afraid your marriage is dying from the inside out. Okay. So these are big sources of stress, right? Hi, Christina. Welcome in. We're talking about stress. Very common to all of us. All right. Um, and Marissa, hi, I haven't seen you in a while. And Mame, hi, how are you? Welcome. All right. So we've talked about what types of things we could fill in those broad categories, those general categories of money, family, um, job, and health. Okay. Now I'm going to keep going with our health. Somebody mentioned being overweight. That's very, very stressful. Not only is it physically stressful on the body, it's also stressful to us mentally and emotionally, isn't it? All right. So when we're talking about health, we're talking about struggling with obesity, which is a common um, stress that we share if we're all here, right? Uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, blood sugar issues in general, uh, heart health, sleep apnea, back pain, knee and joint pain, limited mobility. Those things cause stress. Do you agree? Okay. Now, Jerry is saying, my family stress is that I wish I could see my family more. I live alone with a pug. Okay, so that's a big stress, right? And you don't feel good about it because you just feel maybe trapped or something, all right? Yes to being overweight. And Connie Stembridge, welcome on in. Stembridge Miller, welcome, welcome. All right, so, so that's kind of the way that I'm now starting to sort of dig down a little bit and say, we've got the general things that are the sources of stress, but these are the types of things that we are desperately um, dealing with. And, and not always in very healthy ways, are we? Especially if we are stress eaters. Okay, here's the thing we've got to recognize, all right? Is, okay, Marissa says, I am a single mom of four kids and that is my stress. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it for a minute. That has got to be unbelievably stressful for lots and lots and lots of reasons, right? And Anna, welcome in. Now, not all stress is created equal, however, Stress is stress, okay? So there is perspective involved in assessing stress. So when we look at stress, okay, we need to step back and assess it, okay, but we don't necessarily need to devalue or diminish it because someone else's stress is different. In other words, Marissa, you have a single, you're a single mom with four kids. I'm not a single mom with four kids. So does that mean any stress I have is less important or less stressful? No. I'm not saying you'd say that, but I'm saying that is quite often what we will do, which makes it more challenging to deal with it. We will say, I don't deserve to be as stressed as that person over there. Okay. So what we want to do is say, look, I'm not at this point, I'm assessing it, but I'm not trying to minimize it or make myself feel bad for feeling it. I just got to know what I'm dealing with here. Perspective does matter. All right. It does matter. So someone who's dealing with the stress of four kids, is maybe dealing with more stress than someone who couldn't get a parking space, right? Still a stress, but we do have to get perspective. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't get upset maybe about that parking space, but you're going to deal with it differently, okay? So that's what we're doing. You try not to worry about your kids, but I guess sometimes I do. Mom says, yep, yes, you do. I think, you know, that's what moms and dads do. All right. Hi, Christina. Welcome in. All right. So not all stress is created equal. And guess what? Stress is often an excuse to eat. It is the reason we give for eating. We say we're stress eaters. We say we're emotional eaters. We say, I was stressed and I couldn't help it, right? That, okay, granddaughter hospitalized, uh, preparing for grandson's wedding. So sad stress and happy stress in there. Absolutely true. And you know, this is very good that you guys brought this up. This is excellent that there is sad stress. And then there is happy stress, right? And that's what I say about not all stress is created equal. And yet it can have the same intensity of feeling, can't it? All right. And our response to it can be the same. We can eat over happy stress just as readily as we eat over sad stress, right? Something to think about. Now, what are some of the feelings that we feel when we, the stress 
you know, when we are faced with or when we are met with stress, some of the feelings are fear, anger, powerlessness, a victim. I feel like a victim. It's unfair. Why me? I feel trapped. I can't get out. Things are never going to be different ever. This is all it's ever been and this is all I can see. Things are never going to change. You know, that's who he is. That's who she is. They're never going to change. Um, I don't want things to change. So I have this stress that says I'm so afraid of change, right? I don't want things to change. I know what's going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. There is stress to saying I already know what's going to happen. So we are projecting, right? Would you agree that these are common feelings that we have associated with stress? Okay. My question is, what are you convinced will happen? So if you have a specific stress that you're talking about, you've got to be honest with yourself about what you are convinced will happen. Okay. If we're dealing with a granddaughter in the hospital, that's sad stress. We are convinced there will be pain that we can't take away, right? That maybe she'll be scared or lonely and you can't take that away for her, right? Maybe it will be worse. Oh my gosh, what if it's worse than they thought? Okay, this goes all the way up to, in our minds sometimes, death. I'm not saying that for your granddaughter, good heavens no. But what I'm saying is that can be what we are convinced of that we are maybe ashamed to admit. We're like, oh, 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 I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it, but we feel it. It is still there. The fact that we are feeling it, we've got to know what we're thinking. We've got to know what we are convinced will happen. Okay. So here are some of the things we're convinced will happen. Um, I'll be embarrassed. I'll get angry. I'll be sad. I will struggle or suffer. I won't have power or control. I won't get what I want. I'll die. Okay. All right. Uh, do you guys have any other reasons that you can think of when you're talking about what you're convinced will happen? What are those things that you tell yourself that you say, this is what I'm absolutely convinced is going to happen. And that is why I feel so stressed, right? Maybe I feel helpless. I don't feel like I have any alternatives or options available to me, right? Some of those things to consider. Here's what I want to know. I've talked all the way up to this point about types of stress, about digging deep and getting very specific under these general categories of the types of stressors that we have. We've talked about the fact that there's happy and sad stress, right? We've talked about the fact that there are feelings associated with those that we should be aware of. We've got to know what we're dealing with. We talked about the fact that we are convinced something is going to happen, which is what feeds the stress. Otherwise, I wonder if we would be as stressed. If we weren't convinced something bad might happen when there's stress, okay? Now, I know when we're talking about good stress, we're also talking about I've got to keep up. There's a lot that's going to happen. I want to make sure I do everything I'm supposed to do. I want to make sure everything turns out great. If you're stressed about your kid's wedding, I want it to be great for them. I want them to be happy in somewhere in the back of your mind. Aren't you also thinking, I want them to have a happy marriage too. I want them to be happy in their union, right? So there is stress, even though it's for a happy occasion. We still have very real stress that we are feeling. Jerry says, I am convinced of death occurring or people will stop liking me. Absolutely. And that is so honest to say that. I am afraid if I stand up, someone won't like me. I'm afraid not to be liked. Okay, I get that. I was absolutely driven by, motivated by that fear that I was convinced that that was going to be the net result of my stress. Okay, taking care of someone with dementia is very stressful and you often feel helpless. Absolutely, Georgia. Absolutely. Do you ever also feel like it's not fair? Why is this happening? You know, why, I, you know, why can't I make it stop? Why don't they have a cure for it? Why do I have to go through this? Why do they have to suffer? We have a lot of that too, don't we? Very stressful. All right. Um, what do we do in response to stress? What is one common thing that brings us here? How many of us, as I asked at the top of the show, eat in response to that stress? How many of us do that? Yeah. I think a lot of us. 
A lot of us do. But here's my question. If you eat in response to stress, does it change the thing you ate over? Okay. So in other words, if your, your dog died or your parent died and you're sad, did eating bring them back to life? And isn't that in our heart of hearts what so often we want to have happen? We just want them back. We just want everything to be the way it was. We just want it to be okay again. And so we eat. But the thing is, eating does not make everything okay ever. We, yet we've convinced ourselves that it will. That it will make everything okay even though we know it won't. If you eat in response to like marital problems, right? Will it fix the marriage? There's strife in my marriage, right? We fight all the time. We argue. Okay, if I eat in response to that, does that change the marital problems, the condition of the marriage? If you eat in response to money woes, does the money problem go away? No. This is where logic comes in, guys. This is where the logic comes in, the strategy of recovery. Um, and I know you're saying, but I don't have to think about it when I eat. That's See, I want the benefit of not having to think about the stress. That's why I eat, because I, it does make me feel better for the moment. It makes me feel better when it makes me feel better, you know? Um, so I don't have to think about it when I eat. But here's the thing, you are thinking about it. You're definitely thinking about it. Maybe you're just thinking about it a little deeper right? You're thinking about it subconsciously. Basically, it's eating you up while you're busy eating over it. It's still very much there. It is just a lie that we've told ourselves. It is a connection that we made that we said, when I am stressed, I eat. It's what I do. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Here's the thing. When you eat over stress, you now have another thing to worry about. If you're dealing with obesity or addiction, now you have to worry about your addiction and your weight, don't you? So in addition to whatever that stressor was, now you've added, you've compounded the problem and made it worse. But you're used to worrying about those things, right? It's familiar. It's what you do. It's how you cope. Right, I'm used to it, so it's not really a stress. I mean, I'm used to it. Okay, of course, I mean, I'm disappointed in myself when I eat or, you know, I, I get really bummed out and, and I don't feel good about myself. I feel worse about myself, really, but you know what? I'm used to it. It's what I do. It's my go-to. It's a default setting. I don't even think about it anymore. It's how I cope. I can hear you saying that, right? But here's the thing. We have talked about coping before and we will continue to talk about it. Stress eating in general. Stress eating in general is about avoidance. It is about avoiding the problem, avoiding the feeling, avoiding the fear, being able to just ignore the thing that we are convinced is going to happen. That's all I want to do. I want to mask it. I want to just put my blinders on for now and I want to eat. It's about avoiding and that looks like denying, running away from, hiding, and ignoring, isn't it? I want to hide from it. I don't want it to hurt me. I want to protect myself. I just want to ignore it. Maybe it will go away. I want to run away somewhere because if I run away, that problem will still be here and I'll be over there somewhere. I want to deny it. I just want to deny that it's a problem. If I don't think about it, then I don't have to think about it, right? That's avoidance, you guys. Things we don't want to face. That's what we're talking about here. I don't want to face it, so I'm going to throw everything I got at it so I don't have to face it. Maybe you don't feel equipped or prepared. Maybe you don't believe you can face it. Maybe you don't want the outcome you are convinced you'll have. I don't want that outcome. Therefore, I'll eat over it. And then that outcome won't happen, you say. But of course we know that it doesn't necessarily stop it at all. It doesn't change the outcome at all. Control. A lot of this comes down to control, you guys. When I talk about what you're convinced will happen, you've filled in the blanks and you've said, I know exactly because I'm psychic. I know exactly what's going to happen. There's no other possible outcome. And I must have control 
over the outcome. And since I don't like the outcome I'm convinced is going to happen, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to control what I eat. So I say, see, I'm out of control. I'm responding to this stress just automatically and I eat because I'm just so out of control. But really we're mad that we don't have control. So we say we're out of control, but we're going to control what we eat. And then we say we don't have control over what we eat. Hmm. Right? Sound familiar? Anybody willing to own this with me? Anybody willing to own the control part of this? Yep. Yep, absolutely. As long as eating in response to stress is an option, you'll eat. As long as eating in response to stress is an option, you will choose that option and you will eat. Here's what I want to know. What happens when your car runs out of gas? Do you eat? You go to yourself, no, I w why would I eat? I just, I've got to put more gas in it. I've got to call AAA, right? I got to put more gas. Of course, eating isn't going to put gas in my tank. Who eats over that? Hmm, all right. What happens when you drive your plug-in car to work and there are only two outlets and now someone else is plugging their car in so you can't? I'm not going to say that happened to me this morning. Do you eat? No. You get there earlier, like maybe 7 a.m. You ask to alternate days with the owners of other cars. Hey, guys, can we split the use of the outlets. You ask the building to install additional outlets. Hey guys, you're environmentally conscientious. Can you install some more outlets for those of us who drive energy efficient vehicles? You don't eat over it, okay? It doesn't mean that you don't feel stressed. It doesn't mean that you don't feel the result of not being able to plug your car in so now you're not gonna be charged on the way home. I get it, but eating over it is not going to change that. Doing something about it, doing all that you can to address it does what it does, okay? And you say, but I want a specific outcome. I want to be able to plug my car in there every single day. Okay, well, you don't have control over that. You don't get to decide that. You don't get to decide the outcome. You're responsible for the input. You don't get to control the output, but you do get to control your input, which includes the input of food, doesn't it? All right, you break your leg, you don't eat. Oh no, I broke my leg, I better eat. No, you get a cast on it. What happens if you break up with your partner? Do you eat? Probably. But does it help? No. You work through your part of the breakup and maybe you go see a therapist. Okay. What happens if it's raining outside so you can't go for your daily walk? Do you sit on the couch and eat because you can't go out because it's raining? No. You go to the gym or you work out in the house. Okay. You don't eat in response to these things. Are you catching on? What happens this is a biggie. What happens if you run a t-shirt giveaway and you don't specify one entry per person and then you pick the winning entry and you forget to mention the winning number on your show yesterday? Do you eat or do you laugh at yourself? Ship the shirt and show the number the next day. 127. That was the number I chose. I mean, I'm not saying this happened to me yesterday or anything. Yeah. And then you resolve to do it differently next time. All right. <coughs> Ask yourself, because what this is about is a strategy. We've, we've talked about how it doesn't make sense to eat in response to stress. We've talked about the things that cause us stress. We've talked about the fact that we are absolutely convinced that certain things will happen, and we don't like the way we feel. We are convinced that we have no control, and yet we want ultimate control. So what do you do? Ask yourself. When you're stressed, what is the most logical response here? Logical, not emotional, not what you always do. If you're worried about your marriage, work on your marriage. See a counselor, gain more effective communication skills, work with your pastor, priest, or rabbi. What if you're worried that your marriage will end in divorce if you try to do anything about it? The reality is, whether you do anything about it or not, it may still happen. Got it? But not doing anything about it is going to get you there a lot faster, all right? You don't have control over the other person. You don't. But you sure do have control over yourself and what you do. And what you do cannot be contingent on the outcome. You cannot say the only reason I'm doing this is because I expect that outcome. I'm going to do this because I don't want a divorce. You don't have a choice in that matter if you are married to someone else.
Okay? That's just a reality. And the reason I'm bringing this example up is because a lot of people mention this, especially after bariatric surgery, and they lose a lot of weight, and their relationship with everyone changes. The relationship with themselves, food, others, and especially their significant others, their partners. A lot of marriages and relationships end, and people are very stressed about that. All right? And that is one reason they regain their weight and go back to eating because they want it the way it was, and they remember that they were obese and not treating their obesity right? When they were still in the relationship, therefore, if they go back there, maybe they can go back to that relationship. Okay, I get it. I understand. You say that doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's where we live. When it comes right down to it, eating is our excuse for not facing the things that stress us out. Eating is our excuse for not grieving when we need to grieve. Eating is our excuse for not fighting when we need to fight. Eating is our excuse for why we are stressed in the first place. And since we eat when we're stressed, it's kind of the chicken and the egg thing here. All right, you guys? Now, Juan used to tell me, my husband, when Hannah was a baby and she would cry, he would say, she's only crying because you're crying. And I would say, no, no, she, no, I wasn't crying until she started crying. And then I started to cry. Do you see? Chicken, egg. Well, guess what? Both things were right. She did keep crying when I cried. I was crying because she cried. All right, now what am I going to do about it? How about I have power over myself, not her? How about I don't cry? I don't cry. Will she stop crying? I hope so. But I guarantee you she's going to keep crying if I keep crying. And I'm not going to eat over it. Do you see what I'm saying? We're responsible for our own actions. We're only responsible for our part. But I guarantee you that my not crying is more and more likely it's, it's more likely to turn out that she won't cry or she will stop okay it's more likely but not guaranteed at least i know she's not crying because i'm crying right okay i can't solve your stress i can't do that nobody can but i can encourage you to stop feeding it and start applying logic i can do that what are you convinced will happen as a result of this stress how do you know that will happen? What is the evidence or proof that that is guaranteed to happen? Do you have those guarantees? What would happen if what you are convinced was going to happen didn't happen at all? Okay? What if it didn't happen? You don't know till you know. You don't know until you know. All right? If you want to develop a recovery strategy for stress eating, here's what you got to do. Identify the stress. Give it detail and shape. What we talked about in the beginning. You started broad. I am really worried about family, taking care of a sick family member. There's dementia involved. This makes me feel hopeless and trapped. I feel bad for them because I just want it to be the way it was. You flesh it out and you say, this is the stress. Look at the source, what's causing it, the dementia, the fact that I have had to put my whole life on hold to try and take care of the person I love. Do you have influence over it? Can I get somebody else to help me uh, be a caregiver sometimes so I can get a break? What can I do to alleviate some of this stress? Consider possible outcomes, okay? You know, you, you say to yourself, I wish, I wish, I wish that there were a cure for Alzheimer's. I wish, I wish, I wish. We want that to be an outcome. It's not a likely outcome at this point, you know? And we live on the hope that it will be, but the reality is we have to prepare ourselves for the fact that it's stressful. It's probably not going to turn out that way. We've got, to, we've got to look at the feelings we have about this stress. What is it doing to us? Are we feeling hopeless? Are we feeling cheated? Okay? Then decide what we're going to do about it besides eating. Okay? If I don't eat over this, what are my options? What are my choices? I'm not going to eat over this. That's not an option. What am I going to do? Accept the fact that you do not have control over the outcome unless... You are 100% responsible for the input. And even then, you're going to have to leave room for chance. Got it? You could say, I'm 100% responsible for the input, but you still don't have 100% guarantee of the outcome. All right? So start by making a list of the things that you're stressed out about. Maybe you're stressed because um, the light in the refrigerator burned out. Okay? Maybe you're stressed because someone dinged your car and now you have a scratch. Okay? Maybe you're stressed because someone's sitting in your seat at church. Maybe you're stressed because you're regaining. Maybe you're stressed because you have a problem with food, but you don't want to say you're an addict and no one understands it. Write it down. Big, little, major, dinky, happy, sad, whatever it is. Then write down exactly what you're convinced will happen. I'll lose. I'll look bad. I'll be embarrassed. I'll be alone. I will blank. He will leave me. She will leave me. They will die. They will blame me. I will lose a friend. Got it? 
write down, be honest. This is what I am convinced will happen if I face this stress, which is why I've been wanting to eat. And then I want you to write down exactly how eating in response to that stress and convinced outcome will change the reason for the stress. So if I eat in response to the fact that I have to care for my sick parent, how will that change the reason for the stress? You write it down, and if you come up with a good one, you can go with it. So we say, I eat because I want, it to, I want to be numbed. It delays the problem. It's still there. I, I ignore it. Problem's still there. I'm denying that it exists. Problem's still there. I giganticize. Problem's still there. May not be as big as you think. I minimize. Problem's still there, but you don't know the scope of it. Changing the subject, right? Problem's still there, but you have more to worry about now. Got it? So recovery is about living life on life's terms. If you do not face reality, it doesn't change reality, okay? Even if you're not willing to accept that reality, it is still reality. If you eat to avoid rather than addressing to resolve, you deepen the problem and you lengthen the amount of time it will take to find resolution and recovery. I do not want to have any more stress than I have. I do not want it to last longer, and I don't want it to get worse. Therefore, if there's only one thing you decide to do today, you decide, I will not eat in response to this stress. And you know what? I'll think, I I'm convinced that if you make that decision, you're going to be on a winning, winning path to your recovery. All right? I've gone way long as ever. I'm so sorry. I'm going to work very hard next week to rein it into 30-minute show again. Thank you guys for being here. I want to remind you all, super excited. Recovery Rebel shirts are in. I have some in inventory. If I have your size, you're more than welcome. I can ship it out to you. Otherwise, I'll be building new orders, okay? $20 plus shipping for the um, sizes small to extra large. Add another $1.50 for the double X and, and 3X. And shipping is $6.50. We could talk about support group orders, blah, blah, blah. Just shoot me an email. Me at carriedelacruz.com. Me at carriedelacruz.com. Very, very important. You guys got to tell me the style, the size, and give me your address, all right? I'm still waiting for a few people to get back to me with that information so I can send you an invoice, all right? Thank you guys so much. I do hope that this has helped to begin to look at stress differently in your life, recognize that you do have more power than you think, that you are trying to wrestle for control that you don't have, and you don't have to eat about it, okay? You guys have a wonderful weekend. We will get together and do some more work next week. I guarantee it. Thank you so much for being here. Please, I invite you to share the show. Let's build the viewership, and I'm going to sign off because it's late. Have courage, you guys. Seek peace. Embrace joy. And above all, live your recovery. Remember, you can't stop feeding what's eating you if you don't know what's eating you. I'll see you guys on Monday. Take care. Bye.